night, Worcester police are investigating a suspicious death in the city. Witnesses report they saw the van where a body was found. Plus, a theater downtown could soon receive new life. How two Central Mass residents are looking to revamp Worcester's Olympia Theater. We begin tonight with developing news in Auburn. Good evening, I'm Anna Botari. Police are investigating a fatal car crash on Route 20. New tonight, surveillance video captures what appears to be a man running away from the scene of the accident seen at the top right hand corner of the screen. Police say one person is dead and one person is in custody at the hospital. According to the district attorney's office, a truck across the double yellow line on Washington Street into the wrong lane of travel, hitting two other cars. The alleged suspect originally fled on foot, but was found a short time later. We're told Sutton police apparently had an interaction with him earlier today and surrounding towns were told to be on the lookout. He was seen driving erratically prior to the crash. The DA's office says the suspect has outstanding warrants. Route 20 is now back open after it was shut down for hours. Worcester's Olympia Theater has been vacant for 13 years. Now two Central Mass residents are looking to change that. Patrick Flynn and Jennifer Wright are in line to purchase the building and now need help to make their dream a reality. Our Cam Jandro joins us now live with the details. Cam. Anna Flynn and Wright say they need about $400,000 in order to take the next step in the purchasing process. They say with the city and economic development continuing to grow, now is the perfect time to bring Olympia back to life. The former Olympia Theater in Worcester hasn't seen any action in roughly a decade, but a pair of central Massachusetts residents are looking to breathe life back into the building. The sound is amazing, the sight lines are incredible, there's not a bad seat in the house, and it's just, it's meant to be, it's meant to hold music. Patrick Flynn and Jennifer Wright have a purchase agreement to turn the 130-year-old building into a revamped live music hall. They say the venue is unique in the number of people it's able to fit. We're looking at 1,000 people, 999 people. Which is our absolute uniqueness in the city right now. Uh, so many venues up to 400 and uh, a couple good venues over 2,000. Really cool. Flynn and Wright hosted the Stillwater String Band in the theater Thursday. The goal was to not only test the building's overall sound, but to get the word out about Olympia's potential. We need to find some funding. We have a great plan, uh, we have a feasibility report, and uh, we're looking for someone who is uh, interested in investing in downtown Worcester. The venue would host a variety of entertainment and also have a restaurant attached on the side, but music is the top priority. We're pretty open. Um, you know, I'm not a huge country fan, but the country's huge, so you know, we're willing to do just about anything, fan-friendly music. Now, the two say the project in whole will take about $3 million. Now, once they close the deal, they're hoping things are, they hope they can open the doors in about nine months. Anna. Thanks, Cam. Worcester police are investigating a suspicious death. A body was found inside of a van Wednesday after being towed. The vehicle had apparently been parked there for a while, and people who work nearby say they're concerned. Our Rosalind Flaherty has more. Drive by it every day, coming to work. Never really notice it, just see it sitting there. This is the place Danny Thomas says a blue van had been parked for a month. It's the same one Worcester police found a body inside of Wednesday. It just looked like a regular van, and where it was, uh, you might driving by it, you might have thought that it was just a one of the vans at the commercial shop. Police say the van was towed from this parking lot on Park Avenue. When it arrived at Early's tow yard down the street, the body was discovered. Police are calling this a suspicious death. Considering how long it's been sitting there, yeah, that is very surprising. Marlboro police say the van was registered there and was reported stolen last month. Brianna Sullivan works near where it was found. She says although she never noticed the van, the situation is unsettling. People coming up and down the street all the time. So anyone or anything could have happened. The medical examiner took the body and will perform an autopsy to determine how this person died and how long the body was in the car. I am. Not that shocked, but at the same time, it is shocking that it did happen. It's unfortunate to whoever's family, 
has to deal with it now. The autopsy should give us more details. Police are asking if anyone has any information to contact them. In Worcester, Roslyn Flaherty, Worcester News Tonight. A West Boylston man is charged in connection to a stabbing outside of Hurricane Betty's Wednesday night. Worcester police were called to a local hospital around 1 a.m. this morning for reports of a stabbing victim. They say a 28-year-old male victim was stabbed outside of the Adult Entertainment Club on Southbridge Street. Miguel Perello of West Boylston was charged with assault and battery with a dangerous weapon. Well, for the first time, Worcester's planning board has given its approval for three separate adult use marijuana uses at the same site. Mission MA Inc. already operates a medical marijuana dispensary and product manufacturing operation on Lincoln Street, but has now been given permission to cultivation, product manufacturing, and a special permit for adult use marijuana retailer store at the same location. This is the seventh permit given out for adult use marijuana retail stores in the city. Well, many eyes are glued to the television tonight in New England for Game 5 of the Stanley Cup. After a gut-wrenching loss in Game 4 to the St. Louis Blues, the Bruins, with the help of their captain Zdeno Chara, look to bounce back in Boston tonight. Rutland native Brian Boucher says having their captain play through so much pain should elevate the fans and players on the ice. You got the captain with a broken jaw coming in. Everyone's going to be pumped on the team. They come in fighting. I know the Blues are tough, but they're going to come in. They're going to score. Uh, we got the refs from game two, I believe, and they were in our favor the last time. I think uh, the calls will be on our side. We got the crowd. We got Chara out there. No matter the outcome of tonight, the next game will be played in St. Louis on Sunday night. Massachusetts Senate passes a statewide distracted driving bill unanimously Thursday. The legislation bans the use of handheld cell phones while driving. People impacted directly by distracted driving say this will help save lives. Our Brittany Schaefer has the story. I've spent the last five or six years trying to push the hands-free bill to pass in Massachusetts. The Massachusetts Senate votes Thursday to ban the use of handheld phones while driving. It's something Emily Stein has waited a long time for. Um, it will be exciting to say finally after you know a decade of trying to get a hands-free bill passed. So it, it's time. Um, I'd love to say that we are the 19th state in the U.S. to, to pass. In 2011, Stein's father, Howard, was killed by a distracted driver. The 61-year-old had pulled over on the side of the road to secure a tarp on his truck when a driver programming their GPS swerved into the breakdown lane and struck him. It was a driver programming a GPS while driving something that's still illegal today. Um, so it's... Yeah, every day this, you know, when you see somebody driving using their phone, it's it becomes personal because you realize how easy it is to to lose somebody you love because of something that's so preventable. The House and Senate have now both passed their forms of the hands-free driving bill. Lawmakers say it will improve safety. It passed unanimously. They're going to be uh, paying attention to their surroundings and what may be right in front of them to avoid could be a person. There is enough technology to adapt to being able to use a phone hands-free and quite honestly we've seen you know, instance of traffic fatalities. It's, it's a very good bill. It had bipartisan support. And it's really going to help uh, roadway safety. Stein says if the conference committee combines the two bills quickly, it could go into effect next month. We're really pushing for that July 1st deadline. And um, Governor Baker's on board. He's, he said very strongly that he will sign the bill, get it to his desk. Today marks the 75th anniversary of the D-Day invasion in France. Almost 160,000 Allied troops stormed the beaches of Normandy during the battle in World War II. Worcester's Veterans Service Director Edward O'Connor says D-Day led to freedom for millions who had been suffering under Nazi occupation. He says it's important to honor those who fought. to show sort of the power of what happens when people come together for the right reasons. You know, it's, that's really what's what it's focusing on. A World War II memorial on Worcester City Common features water jets representing the two main theaters of war. 
Two granite piers are engraved with the names of 518 city residents who were killed or listed as missing in action during World War II. Well, tonight, two of our own Charter TV3 colleagues honored for their commitment to covering college sports. Andy Lacombe and Kevin Shea were awarded the Monahan Wallace Media Award tonight at the annual ECAC SIDA Awards Dinner. They were nominated by multiple sports information offices in the area for their coverage of collegiate athletics in the state. They joined good company as Marv Albert, Roy Mumpton, and Jen Tolan have received the award in the past. And we know here at Charter TV3 how hard they work day in and day out. So needless to say, it's a well-deserved honor. Congrats, guys.